Good evening, everyone. My name is Amanda, and I'm on staff here at Ascension, and it is so wonderful to be with you all this evening. A very warm welcome. Now, just a show of hands, who watched the game last night? Come on, England. Sadly, not bringing it home this year. And this Christmas, football has not been coming home. But this December, I have heard so many cries of joy and exasperation of, it's coming home. And the hopes and fears of football years did not come true last night. But I wonder why it is that when we chant for football, we use the phrase, it's coming home. There's so much feeling about coming home, isn't there? Home, they say, is where the heart is. And there is no time when that is more true than at Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. This is the time of year when families come home. Queen Elizabeth II, who died earlier this year, she said this of Christmas. We think of home as places of warmth, familiarity and of love, of shared stories and memories, which is why perhaps at this time of year, so many return to where they grew up. There is a timeless simplicity to the pull of home. Home is where we gather. Home is that place of belonging where you know who you are and where you fit in. The place of rest, the place of comfort, and the place of joy. And in a world that is increasingly insecure, changing and uncertain, we can depend on this time of year. All else may change, but Christmas is the same, reliably on the 25th of December every year. And we all have different traditions at Christmas. When you do your tree, how you do your tree, when you put it up, whether or not you watch Love Actually, and nowhere more importantly than when it comes to the food. And we all know about the classic love-hate debate, don't we? Whether you do or do not love Brussels sprouts. And I have to confess, I am a Christmas food lover. I love it. And my mother makes the best Christmas pudding. And the bit that I like the most about the Christmas feast, if I'm honest, is the stuffing. The stuffing makes or breaks it. And for me, it's got to have a bit of dried apricot in there for it to be the creme. And all that sense of well-being, of feeling well-fed, of being content, that is part of the Christmas spirit at home with the people that you love. And this Christmas, it is time to come home. And tonight, every carol, every reading has told and retold this story. Are you ready? God has come home to be with his people. Once in Royal David City, which is the very first carol that we sung tonight, tells the story of Jesus' birth. And some of the very first words that we sung together were these words. He came down to earth from heaven. And at its most basic, the Christmas story is this. God, who is Lord of all, lived on earth as a man. He came down to earth from heaven and made his home with us. And the reading from the Bible we just heard states this extraordinary claim that Christians all over the world believe and celebrate at Christmas. It says that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And if I was going to put that into sort of more everyday language, I would put it something like this. That God, who created everything, who threw the stars into space, who is immortal and infinite from before the beginning of time, became a human being, a little baby. And he made his home with us, with you and with me.
Christmas is the time that Jesus entered into the human story, made our home his home, the time he chose to join in with us on this long and winding road that we call life. Jesus made his home among us. I mean, wow. But let's be honest, home is not always what we would like it to be. In life, things are not always that simple, are they? I'll be home for Christmas, you can count on me, and with all the strikes and cancelled trains, maybe only in my dreams. And even if we do make it home, home isn't always that great. Last night, England did not bring it home. And even if the trains do run, it's not always happy families. Like the rest of the nation, and probably all of you, I too have seen the headlines about Harry and Meghan's new documentary. And it seems unlikely that this year there will be an invitation either to or from California or Buckingham Palace for Christmas. And for me, that is a sad reminder of just how disunited and fragmented a family can be. Home is so often where the brokenness comes out. Christmas is too often clouded by the big family row. And let's face it, people let us down, and we let them down. And you will buy the wrong present. And I'm just going to break this to you now. You will also be given the wrong present, and then you will have to politely smile and say thank you. And if you have children, you teach your children to do that too. But it's even more broken than that. What about those who don't have presents or family or a home? There's nothing warm and fuzzy about Christmas for then. 2022 has seen three different prime ministers. It's seen the cost of living crisis with families unable to heat their homes the invasion of Ukraine. Here in London, there has been a 16% increase in rough sleepers after the pandemic. And here at Ascension, every week, we welcome refugees into our church who have fled their homes and who often have families scattered all over the world. Christmas will probably not feel like home for them. And we all crave the joy and the intimacy of home, but for too many, Christmas is a time of loneliness, of separation, a reminder of disconnection, disappointment, and even depression. And given all of this, I wonder, do we ever really come home? Is it all just a nostalgic longing for a reality that doesn't exist? a vague golden childhood memory that reality can never quite live up to, a yearning that is never quite fulfilled despite the best Christmas pudding. And, and where is this yearning from? What is it in us that desires that belonging and connection of home? And what if that longing, that yearning for true home is the precise reason that Jesus came, to show us the way to true home. You see, Jesus came into our mess. What I love about the Christmas story is that God did not wait for the world to be ready. He didn't wait for wars to end or inflation to fall. Jesus Christ was born in a land that was occupied by a foreign government. His people were oppressed. And Mary and Joseph, they traveled 90 miles by donkey to get to this place called Bethlehem. And Mary was heavily pregnant, and Joseph wasn't the father, and they were poor. When they arrived, they didn't have a family to support them. There was no chestnuts roasting in an open fire. There were no smoked salmon canapes. And they hadn't pre-booked an Airbnb. And there was no anaesthetic either or midwife that night when Mary gave birth. They found their first family Christmas in a stable. And they laid their newborn child in a manger where the animals fed the Christmas story, it isn't sparkly lights and chocolate advent calendars. He came down to earth from heaven 
and went straight into all of the mess and brokenness and disconnection and confusion of humanity. And I believe that the reason Jesus came and made his home among us, entering into that mess, was to restore what we have lost. It was to fulfill that sense of yearning, that pining for true home. The great Christian Saint Augustine once said this, you have made us for yourselves, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. You see, this Christmas, we will never truly experience home and homecoming until we have found our rest in Jesus. Because true home is not a place, but a person. I believe true home can only be found in the person of Jesus. True home, that place of deep connection, of belonging. And the whole reason Jesus came was to restore that sense of true home. Because Jesus came not only to make his home with us, but to die for us. So even though at Christmas we celebrate Jesus' birth, we also look forward to his death. The moment where through giving himself on the cross, he made it possible for each one of us, each person here, the whole world, to come home again, to be made whole with God and with one another. And tonight, I want to suggest that until we make our home in Jesus, we will always be homesick. Actually, more than that, the only cure for our homesickness this Christmas, the only way to truly feel home, to experience homecoming, is to make your home in Jesus. You see, Jesus came and made his home with us, and the invitation is for us to make our home with him. So I'd like to give an opportunity for us to do that this evening. And some of you here will be like, yep, I'm all in, let's do this. I want to make Jesus my true home. And in a moment, we're going to say a prayer for that. And there might be others of you here tonight who are wondering, I think there might be something in this, but like, I just, I need to know more. And if that is you, we do something here at Ascension called the Alpha Course. And it kicks off in the new year on the 17th of January. And it is a great opportunity to learn about the homemaker, the one that Christians claim is true home. And if you want to, you can book online or you can talk to me or Marcus or Luke at the back about that. But for the rest of us, why don't we just take a moment And we're going to pray. And even if you don't feel like praying, just in respect and consideration for one another, shall we all just close our eyes? So let's take a moment. And if you'd like to come home to Jesus tonight, I'm going to pray a prayer. And just in the quietness of your own heart, you can join in. So dear Lord Jesus, thank you for coming from heaven to earth. Thank you for making your home with us. Lord, I know that there is mess in my life and I own my own part in that. Lord, I want to trust you as my Lord and my Saviour. I believe that you are true home and I want to make my home with you. Please restore me. Please bring healing. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer tonight, please do tell someone about it. Maybe the person who brought you or me or Marcus, but do tell someone.